Windpay Fantasy Novels presents Stellar Transformations, Zing Ken Bian. Author Aik Tomatoes, Wo Chi Shi Hong Shi, Translators He Man, Rai Lane, Thunderhill. Please support the author in the link below. Book 5 The Blood Dread Cave. Chapter 17 Reunion. Being enveloped in the green light, the wound on that purple fish's body recovers noticeably fast. In just a while, it has become perfectly healthy again. The amazing thing is it seems to never have been injured. Cicelia is so awesome, says the little girl with a golden fish scale between her eyebrows in excitement. Having regained its vitality, the purple fish also swims around Miss Lea in an exalted manner. She looks at it tenderly and criticizes, Yanzi. Now you should know how formidable that shark is, right? Later don't show off again. The purple fish moves its small eyes around while flapping its tail non-stop like a clingy child. Miss Lear gives a smile. Afterwards, she turns to Kinyu, slightly stupefied, but then she immediately says smilingly, Mr. Liu Xing, why are you staring at me? Could there be some mark on my face? There is a hint of humor in her tone. Ah! Kinyu is startled. He then sorts himself out a bit and says, Miss Lea, it's just that when I saw you giving treatment a moment ago, I was really amazed. That green energy seems to have very unusual properties. It's unexpectedly so effective in healing wounds. He secretly lets out a sigh of relief and cannot help admiring himself for being able to think up an answer in an instant. Miss Lee Er says with a relaxed smile, this green energy is actually a special skill of my clan. Outsiders cannot learn it. It's indeed exceptionally effective in treating bodily injuries. As long as the patient is still alive, it can always heal them back to health. Oh, it's really marvelous. Ginyu hurriedly says. With a smile, Miss Lea then turns around and goes back to her own room. Kinyu smiles derisively to himself. Just now he was unexpectedly captivated by her manner when giving treatment and almost made a fool of himself, but luckily he was able to react quickly. Hey, big brother Kinyu, have another bout with me, okay? To face as laughingly while brandishing his black stick. At the moment Kinyu is in no mood to fight Hufei. Moreover, if he sparred with this middle Yuanying stage divine beast, would he not be seeking a beating for himself? Even though he likes fighting, he does not want to get beaten up. Time flies. In the blink of an eye, Kinyu has been staying in the ravine for a half month. During this half month, he has occasionally sparred with Hufei when he became thirsty for a fight, but he has spent most of his time practicing the stellar transformations and the Xumo secret technique Northern Darkness. There is also an activity he has enjoyed in his leisure time, listening to the zither. He cannot help admitting that one must be extremely fortunate to be able to hear Miss Lyre's music even once. He has been able to listen to her music for so long simply because Uncle Lan and Miss Lia have been too nice to him. According to Hufei, not even Hufei is allowed to live in this bamboo house. Hufei does not understand why an outsider like him can stay in the house either. Ginyu himself feels that Uncle Lan has treated him pretty well and Miss Lia has been very nice to him. Of course. The latter is very nice to all demonic beasts in the ravine too so her niceness towards him does not necessarily mean anything. But Uncle Lan is different as he treats the demonic beasts in a very strict and serious manner. Not even a middle Yuanying divine beast can live inside, but they allow me to. Could it be? Because I'm also human? After pondering over this matter, he can only come up with this answer. In fact, there is another answer at the bottom of his heart, but he does not think that Uncle Lan and Miss Lia's intention is so terrible. This answer is... They want to steal his meteoric tear. 
Kenya still does not know when he was saved and brought to this place and how much his injuries had healed when that Miss Lia saw him. If Miss Lia knows that he suffered fatal injuries, she can definitely figure out that he possesses some treasure based on the fact that he has now fully recovered. Even though other people cannot detect the meteoric tear because it already fused with his body, they can still guess that there is some treasure in his possession. Hopefully Miss Lyra and Uncle Lan are so nice to me not because of the meteoric tear. At the bottom of his heart, Kinyu is still ice cold and resolute. There is abundant resolution in the blood of every man of the Gin clan. And Kinyu, who has lived alone since he was a kid and could almost never experience his mother's love, has become even more tough-minded, and also even manlier. At the bottom of his heart, he has always been on guard against these two mysterious Xuxianists. He takes a deep breath then slowly exhales. After concealing the thought at the depths of his heart, he immediately calms himself down and starts to practice the Xumo secret technique Northern Darkness again. This technique is his top priority for the moment. Even if he can flee to Xuxian Island, if that blood red caves master Cha Hong chases to this island, he will still not be able to escape death. There are a few reasons why that will be the case. Firstly, underwater Suyaoists are far superior to Xuxianists and Xumoists in terms of overall power, so, what ordinary Xuxian schools will dare to oppose someone who controls an 8 million li radius area like Cha Hong? Secondly, even if he can come into a Xuxian island, the islanders will not necessarily accept him. Moreover, facing Cha Hong, how will those Xuxianists dare to offend Cha Hong to save him? The conclusion from these two points is that he must learn the northern darkness. There is no other way since he has infuriated Cha Hong by killing Charge. Dot. The space inside Kin Yu's head is like a boundless misty area. His spiritual energy, non-physical, is floating in it. Kin Yu can feel his spiritual energy. The outermost 10% of it is under his control and therefore is totally stable. However, the rest of his spiritual energy is a total mess. It either forms maelstroms, or flows extremely fast, or crashes into itself. His soul, which is in the shape of a disc, is in the center of the area. Various electric sparks are zigzagging and flashing around the soul. An extremely weak thread of stellar energy flows into his head. Kinyu did not dare to channel too much stellar energy into his head because, after all, the more energy, the harder to control. Therefore, he tried his best to use as little stellar energy as possible drawing out only a single thread of it. However, even though this is only a thread of stellar energy, he still cannot combine it with spiritual energy. Experimenting again and again. Six hours has passed very quickly. Kinyu does not even know how many times he has been experimenting over the last six hours. He has failed continuously, as if he has been threading a needle. After six straight hours of repeated failures, even someone good-tempered like Kinyu is annoyed. Actually, this is also a method to train his mind. I failed again. It's been a half month, when will I be able to succeed in learning this northern darkness? Could it be unless I can succeed, I'll have to shrink back like a turtle all the time? There is a hint of anger in his eyes at the moment. Why did he leave the Kian Long continent? Can the reason possibly be anything other than to walk the endless path of practice? He wants to roam the Xiujin world openly in an impressive manner, and not to go into hiding to avoid the enemies.
Zither strings vibrate. Zither music rises. Miss Lyre has begun to play her zither again. Hearing these sounds, Kinyu brushes aside his anger at being unable to learn the northern darkness and closes his eyes to calmly enjoy the soul moving music. When it has stopped, he is still immersing himself in the afterglow of listening to it. Liu crossing Uncle Lance strides up to Kinyu. Seeing Kinyu acting in this way, he immediately laughs out loud, Oh my, Lia's music has bewitched you like this. You really are. Uncle Lan, only Miss Lia's music can enthrall me like that. I won't be entranced by ordinary Zither masters, Kinya says smilingly. Uncle Lan's eyes brighten, oh. Others Itherists can't bewitch you. I see, so you're only fascinated by Miss Lia's music. Tell me sincerely, son, are you interested in Lee? Uh? He says jokingly. That's ridiculous. Ginyu, however, does not tense up. Uncle Lan smiles, I'm just kidding. Don't take it seriously, son. Ginyu pouts with a smile but does not answer. Uncle Lan's expression suddenly becomes solemn, Liu Xing, you and I have chatted a lot during this period of time so you should know what kind of person I am, right? It is rare to see him get serious like this. Seeing Uncle Lan like this, Kinyu also becomes serious, saying with a nod, Uncle Lan, if you have any matter, please tell me everything about it. Uncle Lan says warningly, I'm warning you. Liu crossing? You absolutely mustn't hope for a relationship with Lia. You'd best not like her. Otherwise, not only will you suffer for the rest of your life, you will also possibly die any time. Kinyu is startled. He then bursts out laughing, What were you saying, Uncle Lan? You must be joking. But there is not a trace of a smile on Uncle Lan's face. I'm not joking. To be honest, you have a very bright future ahead of you. No one in the entire Xiu Ya world will be able to keep up with you, but let me tell you one thing, if you like Lia, you'll be hopeless no matter how capable you are. In fact, I don't have to warn you about this, but I really don't want to see you get destroyed. Kinyu is baffled. All right, I'm being meddlesome. But you best remember what I've said today. It's also my advice for you, Uncle Lan says while staring at Kinyu. Kinyu feels his heart tremble for a while. What Uncle Lan said just now is really shocking. At first, he said that Kinyu was very promising and that nobody in this entire Xiu Ya world would be able to keep up with Kinyu. Who does Uncle Lan think he himself is? Can he really judge people so accurately? I already remember, Uncle Lan, Kinya says smilingly. However, both Uncle Lan and Kinya cannot make sure that nothing will happen because it is basically impossible to control affection. Once it surges up in the heat of a certain moment, it will become unstoppable. All right, you should put a lot of effort into practicing. Uncle Lan pats his shoulder then leaves. As he is going away, Kinyu watches his back thoughtfully. What is the actual reason why this Uncle Lan said those words? It seems if he likes Miss Lyre, he will likely be destroyed. Is this such a sure thing? Judging from Uncle Lan's and Miss Lyre's behaviors, it is obvious that they belong to a certain special clan. Ha ha! Perhaps Uncle Lan and Miss Lyra are from a very formidable clan. But, if I like someone, even immortals won't be able to stop me, let alone their clan or something. Also, I haven't liked anyone yet. Ginyu gives an unconcerned smile. He has never been a fearful, submissive person. No one has ever been able to intimidate him with force. Even though he is going to have to deal with opponents stronger than him like the Blood Dread Caves Master Cha Hong, he is only staying here to practice in the dark. 
when he can conceal his identity, he will reappear without delay. Kinyu is fearless, but he is not an idiot who is unafraid of throwing his life away. Dot. My arm is broken. It was broken by Boss Hu. The man who uses two daggers and a suit of armor says with an agonized look on his face. His arm is bending at a strange angle. Obviously a normal arm cannot bend like that. Tufei gives him a glare with his fiery eyes, growling, Hey hey Tilda you've even dared to complain to Cecilia. Do you want me to smash your shrimp shell to pieces? Fei Fei, don't be noisy. Miss Liar, who has changed into white clothes, shouts at Hufei. The latter immediately lowers his head and stops saying, looking as if he has admitted his mistakes. Miss Liar laughs playfully then turns to the man with the broken arm. She reaches out a hand, touching the broken place. When Kinyu walks into the courtyard, his eyes cannot help brightening. Miss Lyre is being engulfed in a green light. Her face looks so pure. Her skin is glowing like Jaden radiating various green rays of light. As Kinyu watches her healing that arm, he is rather touched from the bottom of his heart. Kinyu has never experienced maternal love so he has been very tough minded since he was little. Only his father's love has been able to enter the depths of his heart. However, at the moment, Miss Lyre's motherly radiance has also slightly touched his heart. He sobers up in the blink of an eye. I'm warning you, Liu Crossing. You absolutely mustn't hope for a relationship with Lia. You'd best not like her. Otherwise, the warning Uncle Lan gave him not long ago rises in his mind again. He immediately gets out of that state of feeling touched. All right, later you shouldn't fight Fei Fei again. If you fight him, you'll only hurt yourself. Miss Lyre advises. That man's injury has now recovered completely. He says with frustration, fight him? Do you think I wanted to fight him? It's just that boss who? Ah, to me, it's an honor to be able to spar with boss who. I'm very happy and excited. Seeing the look in Hufei's eyes, he shifts his ground instantly. Miss Lia gives a smile. When turning around, she sees Kinyu on one side. How are you, Mr. Liu Xing? Kinyu also says very politely, How are you, Miss Lia? I never thought that I would be able to see your special healing technique again. It's really wondrous. Suddenly, a hint of happiness appears on his face as he can feel clearly that Xiaowei is rushing in his direction extremely fast. Mr. Liu Xing, you seem to be delighted with something? Miss Lyre asks curiously. Kinya says in excitement with a nod, my brother Xiaowei is hurrying to this place. Perhaps he can arrive in just a few days. Oh, congratulations, Mr. Liu Crossing. When your brother has arrived, please let me know about that. There are restrictive spells outside this ravine so it's very difficult for outsiders to enter when they aren't guided by someone inside. Miss Lyre says with a smile. Then I'll have to bother you, Miss Lyre. Kinya says with a nod while smiling. Miss Lyre smiles, Mr. Liu Xing, since you're busy, I'm returning to my room first. After saying, she gracefully turns around and goes back to her room at once. Kin Yu watches her enter the room from behind, gives a smile then turns around and goes back to his room to continue practicing. He practices the stellar transformations and the Xumo secret skill Northern Darkness every day and has never slacked off. After several days, Kin Yu feels clearly that Xi Awe has come very close to him, even within 100 li of him. However, Xi Awe suddenly stops. Kin Yu knows that Xi Awe is being blocked by the restrictive spells outside the ravine. He immediately stands up and gets ready to ask Miss Lia help him. End of chapter 17
Thanks for listening. If you like the video please press like and subscribe for more. Don't forget to support the original author so we can enjoy more of their books. See you in the next video. Love and peace. Windpay.